Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the fourth in a series of video tutorials on how to learn to code in Unity 5. So this episode we're going to be focusing on some scripts which, which will allow you to move objects in your scene view when you specifically go to your game view. So we'll be manipulating these objects in various different ways. I'm going to do this episode back to front from the previous three episodes as I'm going to start in JavaScript this time and then convert to C sharp. Previously we've done C sharp and convert to JavaScript. So let's right click, create and um, JavaScript. And I'm going to call this movement um, underscore A. And let's open it up in Mono Develop or Visual Studio, whichever one you have, makes no difference. So what we're going to do, as I say, JavaScript is really, really easy. We'll start from scratch, so delete everything. And let's do function, and we'll do a start function for now. Open close bracket and open curly bracket. Now the line of code which we'll be using here um, is a way of transforming the position of a given object. So in this case, whichever object this script will be attached to, the position will be transformed. So let's do transform dot position and that has to be equal to vector 3. Now vector 3 is a way of defining um, 3D coordinates within your world. So on the x, y and z, uh, z axis you're able to define numerically where this object can go. So open bracket and I'm going to put um, 0, 0, 0 and close bracket and semicolon. Now what we've done here is we have said that when this script starts we're going to transform the position of the object to 0, 0, 0. And just to show you in action we're going to use something called a yield function. So yield and let's do wait for seconds and in brackets let's do two. Close bracket semicolon and then I'm going to copy this line of code rather than type out again and let's change the coordinates to one, one and one. <coughs> Excuse me. And then let's close our curly bracket and save. So just to quickly recap, function starts uh, the position of the object is going to change. It's going to move to 0, 0, 0 on x, y, and z. It's going to wait for two seconds, and then it's going to change again to x1, y1, z1. A quick note as well about the yield wait for seconds function. This will wait for however long you put within the brackets. However, don't try and use it in function update. It will not work for you. It will only work, in this case, in the start function. So let's head back to Unity and it's thinking about the script we've written here and that's fine. Now let's drag the script movement A onto the cube. Click on cube and you can see movement A is there. The position is currently on x, y and z 1.2, 0, 0. So let's put this as 5, 5, 5 and when we press play now it will appear 0, 0, 0 and two seconds later, it will move to 111. So that's how you can manipulate an object to move it within the scene at the command in the script. So you can just use the transform.position and make it equal vector3 and then put your position in there. So now let's convert this movement A into C sharp. So right click, create C sharp script, and let's call this movement B. And what I'm quickly going to do is on the cube, um, I'm going to remove this JavaScript that we've already written, just to make things easier. So down here, right click, remove component, and let's head into movement B. Now, as always, uh, I'm just going to get rid of void update there. We don't need to modify anything else here, there's no point in modifying it. Now to take the transform.position vector 3000 
we do need a little conversion. It's not quite the same. So we need transform dot position is equal to new vector three and then your coordinates. So zero, 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 close bracket, semicolon. So the only difference really in this line of code is the word new before vector three. So this is, remember this is the C sharp version. So this won't work in uh, JavaScript and vice versa. The JavaScript line will not work in C sharp. The yield function, we can just copy. So let's put that on the next line down. And then let's do the same as last time. In fact, you know what, we'll leave the yield function. There's no real point to that at the moment. We'll go into yield functions at a later date. Okay, so I'm just going to do the position, uh, new vector 3, 1, 1, 1. And I'm going to apply that to the cube as soon as it's had a think. There we go. And let's press play. And there we go, it's in position 1, 1, 1. Even though originally when the scene starts, it's in 5, 5, 5. So, as I say, it's just the word new in front of vector 3 when converting from JavaScript. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, manipulate the object by rotating it. So, let's have, instead of function start, let's have function update. This is the JavaScript now that I'm working in, so this is movement A. So, we'll start in JavaScript again, and we'll convert it to C sharp when we're finished. So, function update. And what we're going to do is we're going to use um, transform dot rotate and in brackets we need to set a couple of numbers. So we're going to start with zero and then one and then zero comma and then space dot world close bracket semicolon and save. Okay, so just to be clear, when we use space.world, we've applied the information, the information we provide is relative to the world we have built. So having space.world is vital to the function of this rotation of the object. So let's save. Uh, I've already saved that, but we'll save again just in case. And I'm going to remove this movement B script. And I'm going to put the position back to 0, 0, 0. Let's move this sphere out the way. And drag and drop movement A onto the cube. So when we press play now, we should see our cube rotating like so. So it should be rotating on the Y axis. The reason is because on here we've put X as zero, Y as one, and z as zero. So we'll only rotate by one relative to the, the world around us on the y-axis. So if we were to change this to three and change this back to zero and save and press play again, the rotation will be faster, but it will be on the x-axis. And you guessed it, the same will apply on the z or z-axis. So let's change everything to 333, just as an example. So it rotates on all um, axes. And then when we press play, we'll see it doing all the rotation it needs. So now let's convert this into C sharp. So if you copy that, and go into movement B, which is your C sharp script. Delete the transform.position, the one we did have. Paste the rotate, and that's it. It's exactly the same. So let's change our void to update rather than start, and let's say. So this particular line of code works in both JavaScript and C sharp. There's no difference between it. So just to put that into perspective. Let's go to our cube, let's remove movement A, and let's drag on movement B, press play, 
and the same should apply the movement the sorry the rotation I should say okay so we've done a couple of things now um, let's let's do something else let's do some more movement um, let's move an object along a certain axis so if we head back into movement a which is the JavaScript remember let's delete transform.rotate so what we're going to do now is we're going to use translate which can move an object either forwards, up, down, backwards, relative to the uh, world we've built again. Um, the line of code is a little bit longer here, but let's go for it anyway. We want transform dot uh, translate, and let's open bracket, and it is vector oops vector three dot Let's do forward. So at this point where it says forward, you can either put the words up, down, or back. So for now, I'm going to keep it as forward. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do start, which is multiply. And then I'm going to put the number one. And then star, which is multiply again. Time dot delta time. And then comma, space dot world close bracket semicolon now as i say at this point we've got the number one there i'll explain that in just a second so for now let's head back to unity onto our cube let's remove movement b and add in the javascript movement a and you'll see it there so now when we press oh compile error okay yep so it's saying, um, what have we done? Oh, sorry, I've put a comma there after forward. Um, remove that comma, that shouldn't be there. That's my fault. So save that, head back into Unity. Let it have a quick think. There we go, and press play. And then you can see our cube moving along that direction. So now let's do, instead of forward, let's do, um, let's see, what should we do? Let's do up. And let's change this one to three. And let's press play. Let's have a quick think. Okay, play. So we can see now that it's moving upwards. However, it's moving faster. So what this is doing is obviously, as I say, forward, back, up, down, you can use there. Now this three is how quickly it's actually moving. So the lower it is, the slower it goes. The higher it is, the quicker it goes. So if you want to move an object along any um, axis in your world, just use this right here, this line. And to take that into uh, C sharp, is the exact same line. So let's copy and let's take it into movement B. So the exact same line of code works in both JavaScript and C sharp. And just to put it to the test, let's save it. Let's remove uh, movement A from uh, the cube. And movement B goes on there. Press play and the exact same sequence of events should happen. It goes up at the same speed, which is three. Okay, so we'll leave that uh, tutorial there for now. That is essentially how you can basically move an object via script without the need of animation. Um, I think next tutorial, we're going to look into accessing certain features within um, objects themselves. So for example, in a script, we can turn off the box collider, turn off the mesh renderer, turn on a script, turn off a script, and modify things all within another script. So until then, um, yeah, just play around with the scripts and see what you can come up with in your scene. Uh, so until next episode, thank you very much for watching.